Okay, you know us. We love going places. We love doing fun stuff, and we love accessible travel. But everything doesn't always go as planned. And we thought it would be kind of fun to show you the way things go. So when you're in London, by the way, one of the best ways to get around is the Uber boat. And it really is absolutely incredible, and it's accessible, and it's, it's great. And you can go up to Greenwich and find out where the Royal Observatory is. And, well, you'll see that in the video. But I went there, and I went to the visitor center, and they told me it was a 15 to 20-minute walk to the Royal Observatory, which is up a hill. And I said, so how's the hill? And they said, it's not bad. I had my cane with me, so I figured, okay, I can do it. Because they said it wasn't bad. Well, let's start watching, and you'll get the idea of how it was. By the way, on the way up, about halfway up, I found the sign. It said 20 minutes to the Royal Observatory. Let's go watch my walk. So I'm walking because nothing panned out with the bus. I'm walking about 10 minutes, I'm about to hit the hill. Everybody talks about it. Okay, did you see the path that I'm on? There's the path to Royal Yeah, this one really went up the hill. Stop the video here. Look to my left. Do you see the gates? That's the path that goes up the hill to the Royal Observatory. Up the hill. Guess what? We're going back down the hill to the right, and we're going to go up the road to go through the parking lots to get to the Royal Observatory. British humor. Turn down the way we to another path. Up the hill. Stand by. This is the path I got off of down there and just made this trip, this detour, to go up the hill. Apparently, an exercise route. So I could double track back to the same road that I could have walked in a straight line. So I added to Mile John. Saw a little bit more of the, the Rennish countryside in fall. By the way, they said it's 15 minutes. It's not 15 minutes from me. By the way, at this point, my I'm back hurts. Incline aren't this really good for me. And all I had done was go up inclines and down inclines. I want to really thank the Visitor Center for their directions. I want to thank the people who run the buses in Great Britain and Greenwich for their directions. However, I did get to see a lot of the countryside. Let's continue on our walk. Beautiful. Very nice. Well, I'm gonna flip this around and show you something. We made a turn. So, this is the positive. Royal Observatory, we get to turn and go in. I don't know how much further it is, but at least we're getting off this road. On arriving at the Royal Observatory, I was asked why I didn't take an Uber to come up the hill from the visitor center. Well, the answer is the visitor center told me I couldn't take an Uber. You had to walk. There's also not a hell of a lot of sun, so I made it in the observatory. There's lots of stuff here regarding the prime meridian, which I'm going to show you in a minute. It happens to be right here. It runs right through the observatory. For those of you who don't know what the prime meridian is, it's what everything else is set for a longitude. There's also an interesting clock. That ball rises up and down, so this place is all about time. And it's still in place. And the clock we looked at outside at one time was a slave to that. Where electric impulses were sent to it. And this whole place is really just about time. Time and navigation. Since that's what Great Britain was based on. Trade. Time signal is the moment that it starts dropping. Not when it gets to the bottom of the mast, but it leaves the top of the mast. The observatory has it's always been important to share Greenwich Mean Time with people. This method was invented by a Navy officer in Portsmouth in 1829. And he thought this would be a good way to fit to set their chronometers, their accurate clocks before they start a long voyage around the world. And so, in 1833, we installed a time bore here at Greenwich. The main objective is for ships sailing out of London along the River Thames, immediately below us, 
for them to set their chronometers. There are about 60 time balls left in the world. Ours is the only time ball left in the world that operates every day. Some time balls never operate, but you can see them. Other time balls operate just on special occasions like, like New Year's Eve. Our ball today is actually operated automatically. Originally, it would have been operated by two people. One person with a mechanism winding it up and pressing the lever to release it, and the other person watching uh, one of the very accurate clocks to actually give the signal to release the ball. Now, the ball you see today isn't the original one. This one was, was put up over 100 years ago and is made of aluminium. The original ball was wooden, a wooden frame actually painted black, which is a little surprising. Red seems a more obvious colour to use. This if you really like seeing old school really need to clocks keep your mechanical eye on the stuff, the Royal Observatory really is some place special. That time wall, old clocks, big, big gears turning that just are incredibly intricate. It's kind of fun and really spending some time. And the views from the top of that hill are absolutely amazing. It's worth a visit, and I would get there in time to watch the time wall go down. No more puns about time. The Royal Observatory really is an observatory. Over time, the observatory went from one telescope to two. A lot of what we're seeing out here was used to align it. So, the prime meridians here, you had it being used by England to help its trade, its navy, because you have the Naval College right below here. And then you look and you see the dedication to further developing knowledge from the two observatories up above. Remember, we're going back into the 1800s, so this is in the infancy of a lot of astronomy. I've wanted to come here for a long time. And this is a map of what's down below. But what's amazing is, this is what's actually there. And that's the actual view. But the Queen's House, the Naval College, everything right in front of you. It is just magnificent. So, what we've seen, the highlights of the, the observatory, including the fact that the time ball comes down at one o'clock. Greenwich is Greenwich Mean Time, where the time originates for the world. The famous clock is right here, Greenwich Mean Time. Now that we've seen that, let's go inside. So the astronomers all lived at the observatory with their families. These are the early telescopes that were here. I'm going to try not to shake too much as I walk through here. And I just want you to feel for what's in here. And you really do get a good view of everything that's here. You can see all the mechanical workings, and you're right on top of them. There's lots of cranks and wood on the wall. Up to the ceiling. And they're all preserved. There's one more telescope. The great equatorial telescope. We're gonna go save it. And my back is killing me. And I wanna look, to look at the stairs and I'm going up to make this video. I am truly sacrificing for this video. So if you're still watching at this point, please continue. This is becoming a very hard video to get through. I walked up that hill. They said it was 15 minutes. There was a sign that said 10 minutes. They knew it wasn't 15 minutes. They lied. <sighs> okay. That's the stairs up here. And this is the door out. I don't like these. They are very difficult. Oh, and now my back's really killing me. And I feel really wobbly. Here is the Great Equatorial Telescope. It's no more used for research, but you can still view the moon, the stars, the planets. What are we doing? Hopefully, we thought about the Royal Observatory, Ryan Meridian, a bit about astronomy. It's pretty close. Cool.
fact that British estimates of time to walk up a hill are not accurate, so I'm going to get an Uber to go back down. So, there's your view of London. Sometimes our trips don't exactly go as planned. Sometimes they're a little harder than we expected. Taking an Uber up to the Royal Observatory would have made that trip a whole lot easier and would have made the stairs a lot more doable. But I managed to get through it. I won't say I wasn't in discomfort by the end of it, I was. But it was worth it. It was amazing to see what was there. If you're going there, take an Uber up to the Royal Observatory. You won't get to walk along those beautiful British roads or Greenwich roads, but you'll probably be a lot more comfortable. Do go through the Royal Observatory. You can stay on the first level if you're uncomfortable going upstairs. Some of those staircases are very tight and winding. They do have rails that you can grab onto, but they're tight. It's worth the trip. A lot of the ground is flat once you're up there, and it's an amazing place to just go see and view. I'm Jack Rose, Ultimate Park Guide. If you enjoyed this, click the button, subscribe, like the video. We hope that we uh, bring you some content that makes your life a little bit better and makes it easier for you to get out and enjoy yourself. Sometimes it hurts a little, but usually it's worth it.